Qué bonito. Uh, bueno, bienvenidas a todas. Hoy tenemos a, a Heather Bradford, a Katrina Springs, Mónica Mendiola, Departamento de Consejería. Y eh, la señorita, la señora Heather nos invita hoy a hacer un check-in. Um, ella eh, tuvo una plática a las nueve eh, con lo que es el CAD Tech Connections aquí en Delta College. Y hablaron un poquito de lo que es um, el, el, el estar solo, uh, lo que llaman en inglés loneliness, y la, uh, cuando uno se isla, o uh, isolation en inglés. Eh, hablaron un poquito de los, um, las ideas de suicidio, ¿verdad? En inglés es suicide ideation. Eh, hablaron un poquito de um, eh, el uso de, de sustancias, ¿no? Como alcohol y drogas. Y todo en el contexto de, de la pandemia en la que está todo el mundo, ¿verdad? Uh, um, y lo que Heather compartía es de que particularmente en estos tiempos estamos viendo que uh, estos uh, aspectos que mencioné en realidad impactan más a la generación Z que vienen siendo los jóvenes de, de 18 a, a 24 años, ¿verdad? Y también los uh, jóvenes, um, young adults, jóvenes que están, son adultos, ¿verdad? Este, entonces, uh, hablaron un poquito de los tipos de, de um, isolation o de cuando uno se isla. La, no sé cómo decirlo en español. La, cuando uno se isla, ¿verdad? Y lo, los tipos de, de estar solo, ¿verdad? Diferentes tipos de loneliness, le llaman. Um, y, y Heather compartió el ejemplo que uno puede estar solo, pero no sentirse solo. ¿Sí me explico? Uno puede sí. estar solo en su casa, por ejemplo, pero no sentirse solo. Y al igual, uno puede estar entre a, a mucha gente, ¿verdad? O familiares, amigos, amistades, y sentirse solo o sentirse sola. ¿Sí, ¿Sí me explico más o menos? Entonces, esos son, son unos ejemplos. Uh, habló eh, um, de nuevo en este contexto de la pandemia de la falta de, de, la, de, um, de conexiones, ¿no? Eh, uh, no hay mucha conexión física, ¿verdad? somos seres físicos. Habló del de aspecto de la interper, lo, lo interpersonal, uh, que eso ya tiene que ver más cuando vemos adentro de nosotros. Eh, y Katrina este, va a hablar un poquito de eso, va a dar unos ejemplos. Uh, adelante, Katrina. Go ahead, Katrina. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sergio. Yes, thank you. Um, so I was telling Heather in our last meeting that my parents don't know Um, or I should say like they I think they know I'm gay it just hasn't registered it's not open conversation they don't ask me how my girlfriend Angela is doing they've met her she comes over it's just like not a conversation I think in part of that it makes the loneliness a little bit worse because then that side of me isn't projected and it's not talked about and it's kind of like hidden um, and I kind of started thinking about like my friend who um, just came out to his parents last weekend and he's been struggling with it too. And I think it just got me back to like thinking of childhood and just how we grow up. It's like, of course I love my parents. They're there for me, but you really can find in your friends. Um, and so being away from just that environment where it's like comfortable, you don't have to worry and um, just, you know, you have your nice little knit of friends and I kind of have that. And so being, pulled away from that and being placed in an environment where a part of me is not like talked about. It's just like a little, like I feel very distant at home. The environment is not where I'd like to be. So that's just like a very strange part in all this is just like feeling like my, like my deepest part of myself is not shown. So that's what I shared with Heather. And, and I think, um, and I think Sergio, when you, when you describe this, um, I think that on another level, when you talk about the intra, the intra um, personal isolation and loneliness, how would our students experience as well with this, or even us as faculty and staff or, or individuals that are working, you know, those connections that we have at work every day, and even the sense of, of who we are that we get from the role that we play in, in our jobs, um, you know, when we're, when we're cut off from that, or when that shifts to where we, it just looks totally different now, we don't realize how much of who, who we are now feels disconnected because we no longer have that identity intact anymore, or it's shifted and now we have to try to reform that identity. 
So that can really create loneliness. And I, never, I hadn't really thought about that. Like, you know, we take some of these things for granted um, when we look at our whole, our sense of our whole. But again, those, those shifts and those things that have coronavirus and this pandemic has caused us to do has really made us, forced us to step back and kind of look again at, you know, where we are. And being with our students, a lot of them are in homes or in household situations that are not supportive because they live in two worlds. They live in the world where they're known as a student, but then they go home and they might live in a totally different world at home. You know, especially for some of our students that go home and culturally there's a lot of differences between what they experience at home and what they're experiencing when they're at school with their peers um, or in their other environments. And um, they feel less understood maybe when they're at home. Um, and, or a part of who they are is just not acknowledged, like Katrina was saying. So, you know, we can understand that even though our students may have very loving families and, and, and meaning, meet well-meaning supports at home, they don't necessarily feel connected. And so that can lead to that sense of isolation and loneliness, which increases the risk of things like depression and um, suicide ideation. And we've unfortunately seen an increase in that in this in the, during the pandemic, which I think is what Monica and Regina will be getting into in just a moment. But I just kind of wanted to talk about those two. And then the third the third type of um, isolation is the existential isolation, and that that Sergio, when when you're interpreting um, the existential isolation, is more of a sense of those deeper questions of life, um, the meaning that we have, what's all this mean, uh, what's going to happen in the future, what is the uncertainty of the unknown of my existence, and how is this playing out, you know, um, and so you kind of get yourself into this downward spiral when you start going there, because there's so many things that have disrupted our peace, with the protests and with all that's been going on in our, with the elections, all the things that have been happening in the media, we watch all that's going on, we look at the pandemic, we look at our health, we look at our, the financial state of the world, all of these things that can be like leaving this sense of what's the point of life? <sighs> You know, what, what, what does all this mean? And so that can certainly make all of us at risk of having some, some mental health challenges where we could, if we don't have the right tools and if we're not accessing the right types of support that we could find ourselves in a, um, in a place where, you know, it's beyond our ability to manage and cope with those feelings. So I know that was a lot, but you go ahead. I'm trusting that you can interpret that. <laughs> I know, you know what? I, I, uh, I'm, is it a kinesthetic? I, I, uh, you know, I have to take notes on this. So, um, <laughs> um, so entonces decía, I think you had there in Katrina. Eh, so entonces dice Katrina, uh, gracias por compartir Katrina, que, you know, ella, ella es este, uh, alguien que es gay. Uh, y piensa que sus papás ya saben, están casi segura que ya saben, ellos lo notan. Um, este, pero, y you no, know, cuando viene su novia a la casa, uh, sus papás en su casa no, realmente no la, uh, no la, no la, no la reconocen, ¿verdad? No, no le dan esa validez, ¿verdad? Entonces, eso produce un sentimiento de, de, este, de, de sentirse sola, ¿no? ¿Verdad? Cuando a uno no lo, lo, lo validan en su propio hogar, su familia, sus padres. Um, eh, ella, uh, eso también le, lo, la hizo reflejar en, en, en su niñez, ¿verdad? Que si sus padres vieron por ella en su niñez um, y la cuidaron, este, pero realmente um, ella ya ahora en, en esta etapa de su vida confía más en sus amigos, ¿no? Este, um, y pues lo que ella eh, eh, experimenta ahorita es ese sentirse uh, eh, sola en el ambiente de su casa, ¿verdad? Porque no, no, no la validan como una persona gay, no validan a su novia, right? Cuando viene a casa, entonces está en familia y con sus papás, pero aún tiene ese sentimiento de que está sola, ¿verdad? Entonces le damos las gracias a Katrina por, por abrirse, como compartir eso. Uh, y, y Heather ag agrega también en, en el aspecto de, de nuevo en lo intra o, ¿es it intra o inter? It's when you talk about inter. So in the inter and the intra is intra is inside yourself. Yeah, Inter more okay. internal. Mm -hmm. Entonces, Heather, eh, eh, en ese punto dice uh, también en cuanto a lo, lo intrapersonal que tiene que ver de adentro. Um, estamos ahorita con, juntamente con los estudiantes 
experimentando uh, ese análisis ¿no? de lo intrapersonal. Um, y, y, y estamos hablando de un sentido de... Um, eh, uh, estamos en un ambiente donde los estudiantes no están uh, en, en, en el colegio y también nosotros como trabajadores no estamos en el colegio, entonces estamos faltos de esa conexión, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, uh, eso, eso nos puede llevar a sentirnos solo en, o sola en el contexto de, de este coronavirus del, del, del COVID-19. Um, entonces, esto a todos estudiantes y a nosotros como trabajadores nos ha forzado de, de tomar un paso hacia atrás eh, y ver en dónde estamos, ¿verdad? Eh, um, yo sé que Heather habló un poquito también de um, las diferencias culturales en cuanto a este, you know, el estudiante cuando va al colegio Uh, ese es un mundo, ¿verdad? Uh, eh, eh, tú sabes, ahí te como estudiante, en tus clases, maestros, uh, y en tu casa, pues ya regresas a un rol um, de, 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 este, de, de que eres hijo o hija o mamá o papá, uh, pero en realidad en esta situación eh, se pueden encontrar los estudiantes en su casa todo el tiempo, no necesariamente los validan como estudiantes. ¿verdad? Entonces, un estudiante puede ser para mamá y papá, pues, hijo o hija, ¿verdad? Antes de que sea estudiante. Entonces, ese es un proceso que también están pasando ellos. Uh, quizás aspectos como uh, no los entiendan tanto en, en, en la casa, ¿verdad? Entonces, quizás las cuestiones serían, ¿no? ¿Es ¿por qué estás todo el día en la computadora? O, you know, que no te dan break de la escuela, cosas así. Uh, yeah. Todo esto es parte de quién, quién no somos um, y, y, y el, el hecho que no nos reconozcan, um, eh, eh, que no tengamos ese reconocimiento de, de los diferentes ro roles que tomamos um, en el trabajo y en la escuela, uh, este, nos puede llevar a la gente a la depresión, a ideas de suicidio um, y, y, y cosas así, ¿verdad? Diferentes uh, problemas de salud mental. El tercer punto que, que dice Heather que quiere compartir Uh, and uh, uh, voy a invitar, uh, I'm going to invite my folks, my, my bilingual folks, uh, if y'all want to help me um, translate existential isolation, y'all are welcome. Mm -hmm. um, Or just it, the whole idea of existentialism, which is really just the sense of having meaning and purpose. The, it's, it's the belief of that life has meaning and purpose. So it's that search for meaning and making sense of what's going on in terms of you know, the deeper, the deeper ideas about life and meaning and purpose. So Perfect. I guess if you don't have to use existential, you could just talk about the sense of meaning. <laughs> yeah, no, that's wonderful. So, <laughs> en inglés hay una palabra que se llama existential isolation o um, aislamiento existencial, uh, existencial. Uh, pero realmente lo que es, es ese pensamiento de, de que dice uno, de qué se trata la vida. Uh, ¿Por qué estoy aquí? Uh, you know, ¿Qué significa todo esto que está pasando, verdad? Entonces, ese es un punto donde nos lleva eh, a, a un pensamiento uh, más profundo, a preguntas más profundas sobre la vida. Eh, nos lleva a pensar eh, y a reflejar de, de la incertidumbre uh, de lo que no sabemos qué va a pasar, porque realmente no, no sabemos. Um, eh, y nos deja pensando, ¿verdad? Este, de, de cuál es el punto de la vida. ¿verdad? Entonces, Heather reconoce que este es un tercer aspecto de lo que está pasando realmente todo el mundo. Uh, y muchas veces, si no tenemos las herramientas uh, eh, eh, uh, para la salud mental, los recursos, uh, eso le lleva a uno a, you know, a uso de drogas, alcohol, la depresión, diferentes uh, sentimientos negativos, ¿verdad? Um, thank you, Heather and Katrina. Hello. Sí. So we just wanted to um, just more or less set the, <gasps> let's set the framework or the tone of the conversation because while it you were asking us to talk about um, mental health challenges during this time and, and particularly as it related to suicide, um, we know that depression is one of the risk factors, not, not necessarily does if someone is experiencing depression doesn't mean that they're going to be suicidal, but we know that for young people, that is one of the highest risk factors of, 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 of suicide ideation or suicide um, 
um, thoughts or the attempt to, to want to end one's life is that sense of, of that they just don't believe that there's anything worth living for anymore. They get to a place, a dark place where, um, you know, they don't see a way out of the sense of hopelessness that they're feeling and experiencing. And unfortunately, they believe that this is the only solution that they can find to end the pain that they're experiencing. And, um, and so unfortunately, you know, anyone can be at risk of this and we certainly um, want to look at what the warning signs are, um, how to help someone that might be experiencing um, some mental health challenges um, prior to that sense of crisis where we can, you know, reach out and be able to provide some help for them. So I'm going to turn it over to, to Regina and to Monica and, um, and then we also have Katrina Springs who's here. I'd like to introduce her as well. She's our wellness ambassador for Delta College for this semester, and she's going to be um, ending our discussion with some resources that she's going to share with you um, that are both on campus and in our community that are available for, um, for you to access as students and as, um, as, uh, um, yeah, as students at Delta, and also faculty and staff as well, are, um, resources that would be helpful for them. So thank you for being here, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to, to Monica and um, Regina. If, if I may, there's a few um, uh, items in the chat. I don't know if you okay. want me to. Voy a leer aquí en el chat. Y dice, lo voy a tratar de traducir. I'm going to try to translate it. It says, hi. Um, I want to share that I like very much my classes um, uh, here at the college. Uh, but ever since they changed uh, to being online because of the pandemic, um, it's been uh, very difficult, um, and and, este nuevo, and, and uh, this new medium has been challenging. Um, I haven't had uh, uh, good and um, a, a good experience enduring um, and keeping up. Um, I failed in in all of my classes, unfortunately. Um, I thought that uh, being online it would be easy, but it's not. Um, it's been super difficult, and I would like to see if 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 you could um, offer me support, professional support, uh, as I feel uh, very guilty. Um, mm. I'm gonna pause there just so for a response, Heather. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so and, and I don't know if um, yeah. no, uh, to, lo, lo voy a leer en español, pero está en el chat eh, y dice un estudiante aquí dice hola. Yo quiero compartir que me gustan mucho mis clases del colegio, pero desde que cambiaron las clases a online por la pandemia, se me ha hecho muy difícil uh, este nuevo me medio. Uh, no he tenido buen rendimiento, he fallado en todas mis clases. Pensé que, que eh, en línea iba a ser uh, fácil, pero no. Uh, me, ha, me, me, me ha hecho súper difícil y me gustaría que si me pueden brindar apoyo profesional, ya que uh, no me ya que me siento muy culpable. So, go ahead, Heather. Okay. So, yeah, I, it, you know, it's, it's very, even, even communicating through this medium of, of, and it just makes me feel like I'm feeling so bad about the fact that, that I've attempted to try to take Spanish on two different occasions through Delta College and had to drop both classes both times because it was just so hard. Um, I wish that I had the language skills. I used to run the Puente program and I used to joke with the students and the parents all the time about, you know, I love you, I love you, but I just, I feel so much like there's this barrier between us because of the language, you know, barrier. And um, there's just some things that go meet, that, that kind of go missing in between when you, even when you're interpreting, it's very hard to have that, that direct connection. But I just want to say thank you very much for being here. Um, I don't have all the answers. I, just like you, and I can think, I would imagine that most professors, especially those that have not been used to teaching in this medium of online, I would say that probably all of my colleagues are struggling right alongside with you. Um, we don't like this at all. We don't feel that this is our preferred met way of teaching you. Um, because part of teaching is being able to engage in relationship and being able to have those connections where you can get to know your students on a personal level and you can really kind of get to know 
their ways of learning. You can get that feedback from them to know how they're learning, if they've understood what you're saying. Um, there's just so much that goes on that goes missing in this in this virtual um, learning environment. So I would say that that the one thing that I can just remind all of you is that whatever it is that you're going through, you're not alone. And there is no reason, even though you can't tell someone not to feel a certain way because your feelings are your feelings, and I do want to acknowledge that, but feelings like guilt or shame or feeling hard on yourself because you're not doing as well as you would like to do or you're not adjusting as well as you feel like someone else is doing, um, you have to be very careful with that because because then it's it's adding to your sense of your of 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 your sense of self. Um, you're you're you. There's no labeling this as bad or good. Um, you what you feel is what you feel. But guilt over something that that wasn't caused by you. You know that's something that that I would encourage you not to take that on. You know none of us caused this to happen. This is something beyond our ability to control. But it's happening to us. And so we're doing all we're doing is the best we can do to try to adjust and, and, and adjust to this, these changes. Um, and, you know, how that looks for each person is going to be very different. But if you feel that you're struggling, I would just encourage you to know that you're not struggling alone and definitely reach out for help. Um, and that could look different to, for everyone. You can be reaching out to help by, by asking for more help from your success coaches or those that are there to help guide you through some of the technical difficulties you're having. Um, you can reach out to help by you know communicating with your professors and explaining to them what's going on and maybe they can offer some suggestions on things that you can do it can mean that on a personal level you might need to reach out for help we have monica and regina who are here that see students one-on-one -on -one for personal counseling and they i know they can share some experiences of what they're doing to help students just kind of like being a facilitator and a coach for them to help them give them some tools and give them some ways that they can help manage these emotions that they're feeling and give them some tools that they can practically use to helping them get through this time and become more successful in their lives. So, you know, the I would say take advantage of that support, you know, through them and through the counseling support that you can get. And there's other supports and, and Katrina can talk about that. But just remember that that you are not alone, that 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 everyone on a on various levels is struggling right alongside with you. We're all just doing the best we can to, to adjust and to cope with things that are just very difficult to adjust and to cope with. And um, there's no one right answers. So whatever you're doing and whatever effort you're making, applaud yourself for what you are doing and that you're going to keep pushing through this and that you're, you know, that, that things will get better and try not to lose hope and not trying to not lose sight of the reasons why you started. I saw a quote recently, it was at the gym, but it said on the wall in big letters, it said, when you feel like giving up, just remember why you started. Wow. Wow, mic drop. So, hey, well, yeah, hey, I'm Heather. I'm going to uh, translate your previous point, and then I'll come back to this. And then, it, it, unless uh, I'll honor however you guys want to uh, manage the meeting, but there's a few other items on the chat, so I'll leave it up to you. Um, voy a traducir el punto inicial que, que comentó Heather antes de, de lo que estaba en el chat. Y eso es este: uh, el día de hoy queremos eh, eh, poner el tono a, a esta conversación, ¿verdad? Uh, y ese tono, parte de ese tono es eh, viendo a la, a, la, a, la, a la población de jóvenes uh, que, que tienen un, este, un, high, un um, factor uh, alto en cuanto a la ideación del suicidio, ideas de suicidio. Este, Habla un poquito en, en cuanto lo, lo, el sentimiento de, de que uno no tiene esperanza. Eso muchas veces lleva a la gente a sentirse... Uh, Que, que se tiene que suicidar, right? O pensamientos de esos. Entonces uno tiene que estar bien astuto y, 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 y um, astuta y, y um, tiene que estar prestando atención a los signos, ¿verdad? Uh, de esos sentimientos o pensamientos um, eh, y saber que hay que hay ayuda, ¿verdad? Este, entonces uh, Katrina Springs dice Heather es um, la embajadora de uh, le llaman en inglés wellness ambassador. Es la embajadora de, del bienestar aquí en Delta College. 
y ella va a compartir algunos recursos también, ¿verdad? Entonces, la respuesta que dio Heather um, al comentario del chat de, de, um, de, de Daphne este, fue lo siguiente, ¿verdad? Es de que, you know, uh, Daphne compartía la, el, el reto de, en sus clases con todo esto de la pandemia y que, ir a clases en, el, en el internet. Um, no, Heather eh, uh, una vez tomó clases de español y, y de veras que eran difíciles para ella. You know, este, ella uh, dirigió el, el programa de Puente y pues le decía a los padres, los amo y los quiero mucho, pero man, realmente hay una desconexión porque no hablo español. Este, entonces, lo, usó eso como ejemplo, ¿verdad? Pero primero, Daphne, Heather, te da las gracias por estar aquí hoy en este día. Um, y te dice que todos nuestros colegas, eh, eh, valida tu sentimiento en, en decir que todos nuestros colegas están batallando con esa misma cosa, ¿verdad? De que no queríamos uh, este sistema de, 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 de ir online, pero eh, estuvo que ser así. Uh, y reconoce que cuando uno enseña eh, eh, las conexiones con los estudiantes, eso es importante, la conexión de persona a persona, es importante que los estudiantes eh, uh, eh, conozcan a sus profesores y también eh, los profesores a los estudiantes a un nivel personal. Um, Heather te dice que no estás sola, Daphne. Um, este, tus sentimientos son válidos, uh, pero tienes que tener cuidado eh, con tener sentimientos de culpabilidad eh, y, no, y saber que nadie encasó esta situación de la pandemia, ¿verdad? Esto fue algo que ocurrió, eh, nadie lo planeó, ¿verdad? Entonces tenemos que tener uh, cautela con eso y tenemos que hacer lo mejor que, podemos, que podamos para adaptar a estos cambios. Eh, y Heather también ha mencionado a los consejeros que están aquí, Regina Droll y este... Mónica Mendiola, que, que te van a poder aportar herramientas eh, y, 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 y apoyo para, para este proceso en el que estás pasando. ¿verdad? Y que tomes ventaja, y todos que tomen ventaja de eso. Y que también se aplaudan a, a ustedes mismas eh, por lo que sí están haciendo, ¿verdad? Y, y saber que todos, eh, eh, va, todo va a mejorar. Y, y dice Heather que estaba en el gimnasio y que vio, uh, estaba haciendo su ejercicio y que vio un sign, un quote uh, uh, en la pared y decía, eh, cuando te sientas eh, ya que estás lista para rendirte, acuérdate por qué empezaste. So, with that, Heather, um, I don't know if you want me to keep reading the chat or if you want to pass the mic to your entrance. Um, I, one of the questions asked in the chat was, do we offer counseling in Spanish? And I would want to, let me refer back to Regina and Monica. Um, I, I'm, I know that there, there it would always be an option of trying to arrange um, a session of counseling with interpretation if that was necessary or needed. So we definitely can have some um, options around that. Would you like to, would you two like to address that for an individual that's looking for, to work with you? Um, how that would how that might be able to work out um i'm not sure how th that would work exactly a delta provided a translator to join us on perhaps like a physical zoom call then you we could have somebody translate mm -hmm. other than that i don't know delta would probably provide that individual so they weren't a third party from us that's mm -hmm. just my first thought i had never thought of that before um, Angelica, would that be something that if, um, if a student um, that wanted to, would you be comfortable if there was someone that needed to have um, um, interpretation for a, for a personal counseling appointment, if they gave consent, would that be something that you'd be comfortable doing? Yeah, um, I wouldn't mind doing it. Um, I can just check in. Um, to, you know, I would have to talk to my supervisors, but mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. Um, mm -hmm. And then I'm just, I'm just wondering too, because um, when we worked for the, uh, when we were planning for the Dreamers Conference, there was an option of getting an interpreter. So mm -hmm. I'm wondering if um, Delta has that type of service um, and who would we talk to, but I can connect with Sergio and then we can try to to figure it out after. Mm -hmm. after yeah, that Sergio, that would be something because I don't think I've ever really thought about how we would deal with that, especially right now during this virtual environment. Um, I know that right now um, there are ways that we can um, 
there are certain consents that we can give if someone's role in participating in an appointment would strictly be for interpretation they would just have to you know sign a, a, a waiver of, of confidentiality and be able to give consent and the person that's seeking the counseling would have to know that there is a there would need to be a a person in on that call or in on that Zoom call that's there to interpret. Um, so I, we, we can talk about that further, Sergio, outside of this and see if we can maybe come up with some of that because I think if that's something that's needed, we need to figure out a way to make that happen um, to provide that, sur that support. Um, right now, I don't believe any of our interns are bilingual, but um, certainly, with, and I'm, I know that we do have a few counselors who are, but those are not counselors that are necessarily um, seeing students necessarily for ongoing personal counseling. Um, so, you know, so I, I think that's something that we definitely need to need to address. And when things come up, we just like, oh, okay, let's look into seeing how we can make that work. You know, it's kind of like didn't really think about that before now. So let's let's try to work on that. Yeah, um, um, just briefly, uh, I will, it will be brief. Uh, nomás hay una pregunta en el chat que si hay consejería en español. Um, eh, y este Heather se refirió a los, a los uh, interns que les llamamos uh, eh, para ver si hay esa opción de, inter, de intérpretes. Uh, podemos ver si Delta College puede proveer un intérprete. Uh, 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 dice Heather, me imagino que um, uh, habría un... Este, uh, un, una forma de confidencialidad que quizás tendrían que firmar para ver de este uh, tener a alguien ahí para interpretar verdad entre usted y el consejero entonces vamos a explorar eso más uh, después de la junta thank you Helen. And my other my other point, just remembering, is that we are opening um, the community medical centers is going to be opening the student health center in a, in a few weeks time, and there will be a clinician on staff, a mental health clinician on staff through community medical centers. And my understanding is that they're trying to make sure that that person is bilingual. Um, so that's something that we have to look forward to as well as, and is short of that, the other resource that, that we can provide as, um, as working with, um, with you is that we can also try to help you find um, outside referral sources for counseling, if that's something you'd like to look into, where we can look for you a provider that can be, um, that, that is bilingual. And there are a number of them. I know they have them through the, um, through El Concilio has therapy that work with them that are bilingual that they see anyone and anyone in their community that is it's it's a service that's provided and they do have um, individuals that can be seen but there's a number of resources that we could help you with finding if that's something that you that you feel that you need is um, is outside of Delta College um, referral together so you said Heather okay uh, oh también otra cosa en el Delta College van a estar vamos a estar abriendo el Uh, el centro de salud para estudiantes uh, muy pronto. Eh, ellos están haciendo un trabajo diligente para tener una persona bilingüe uh, que trabaje ahí. Este, y también podemos este, encontrar y buscar recursos fuera de Delta College para uh, eh, y encuentren la ayuda que necesitan. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Back to you. Thank Heather, you. do you want to provide maybe like the uh, crisis number? where they can, like if they're going through a crisis and they can't get a hold of anybody that speaks Spanish here at Delta, you want to provide that number, maybe there's an 800 number there that they can talk to someone in English and Spanish? Is there? Something? Well, yeah, I can provide that. Well, Behavioral Health has a crisis line that's, that's both in English and Spanish. So there's a number of those, and I would be happy to forward that information to you, um, that you can that you can access those crisis lines. And those are always going to be available in both English and in Spanish as well. So le estaba I, preguntando, thank you, Heather. Le estaba preguntando a la, a la señora Heather que si había, si ella tenía un número de teléfono donde podíamos hablar, um, si, te, si estás pasando por una crisis, y a lo mejor no puedes hacer una cita con alguien de aquí de Delta porque no hablan tu lenguaje. Dice que ella puede mandarnos un número de teléfono donde pueden llamar si estás en crisis y no puedes contactar a nadie aquí. Y este, ahí te van a atender en inglés y en español también. Ella nos va a mandar la información. Thank you, Heather. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't go ahead and let um, pass the, the conversation now on to Regina and um, Monica. So, seguimos con Regina y Monica. Thank you, Heather. So, I'm going to start sharing my screen right now. Let me, so let me How much time do we have, Heather? 
What's what is that? that? How much time do we have? Um, I believe the session goes until 1130. Is that correct, you guys? Yes. Okay. So for the information, I think we'll try to keep it brief because I know um, Sergio will try to um, also translate the information as well. So first and foremost, so confidentiality, we want it to be an open space. Um, this, we will provide some information, but we do want to leave some space for discussion for you all to share um, and kind of talk about how you're going through with COVID and even just how you're, you are mentally. Entonces vamos a empezar, oh, claro, vamos a hablar cómo está usted con, con el COVID, cómo está usted mentalmente, pero primero queremos reconocer la confidencialidad, ¿verdad?, de, de, de esta plática. And a little bit about Regina. Okay, so I'll try to sum this up a little bit shorter, but um, basically uh, we did this workshop and we give a brief bio of our background. And so I just share that I'm from Stanislaus State um, and I'm pretty much done with my master's in counseling. And, um, and at this time, um, I... I just share that I work at Stanislaus State as a writing tutor, writing specialist, and I've, I've been doing that for four years, and this program also. Um, I share that I'm remarried because I went through a previous trauma with my ex-husband, and it was domestic violence um, for my son and myself, and it was a severe trauma, and I, I really use that as... Um, um, I use that spirituality and faith in my counseling now. And um, so that's part of my story that I share. Or if I don't share it, it feels that ex the experience of now counseling and the reason why. Um, I like to incorporate writing, um, writing for students as therapy, um, nature, um, faith, spirituality. Um, I've presented um, research at Notre Dame uh, St. Mary's College on spiritual first aid. Um, it's disaster relief um, aid for trauma victims and um, it's really quite wonderful. It's from the American Counseling Association. So basically just some research there. Our, our counseling program went to Italy and we presented research on um, child development and um, you know just research is, is a good thing because we get to ex explore so many new things and um, just basically, just to sum it up, just from trauma using arts and faith and spirituality, I, I, I see it really help um, myself and people. So that's a background that I share when we begin our presentation. So that's a little bit about me. And we have um, our next slide too. So this is my slide. So my name is Monica. Um, so I am also in the program. I'm finishing up the school year. Um, so I should be done by next May. Um, so I got into counseling because I like to help others achieve their goals, whether it's learning how to overcome anxiety, depression, and eating disorder, past trauma. Um, overall, I like to help whatever the student or client wants to work on. Um, and so I just have a little bit about my self-care activities that I enjoy. So I like working out. Um, it helps me, um, you know, get my body moving, gets my mind right. I like journaling, working in my planner. I love listening to music. Um, and personally, my favorite is watching Netflix with just a big blanket. And lastly, um, so Jennifer Makine, she's also the third intern. So you can definitely schedule an appointment with Regina, myself, or Jennifer. And like we've mentioned, I think we're all open to having any interpreter or translator involved um, in the session um, so we can best help you. Um, but this is a little bit about Jennifer. She's also in the program. She is alumni from Delta College. Um, yeah, and she finished her bachelor's at ULP and she, also likes helping students and clients cultivate resilience. Um, yeah, I can, I can translate. Okay. Uh, I'll put it in a nutshell. Okay. Uh, entonces tenemos a, a Regina uh, primero y este ella eh, uh, es, está estudiando o acaba de estudiar su maestría en consejería en, en la Universidad Estatal de Stanislaw. Um, ella es especialista de, de escribir ahí en, en, en la universidad. Uh, 
fue recasada, todo ese es su segundo matrimonio, um, este, se divorció por causas de violencia doméstica, este, y comparte que you know, ella enfatiza mucho la espiritualidad y la fe en su trabajo, incorpora la, eh, este, a la escritura, eh, eh, la naturaleza, de nuevo la fe y espiritualidad en, en las consejerías que ella hace, uh, dio una eh, presentación eh, eh, en cuanto a, a, a spirituality aid, que le llaman la, la ayuda espiritual, este, en, en la Universidad de St. Mary's y también tuvo la oportunidad de presentar eh, investigaciones del desarrollo de niños en Italia. So, uh, uh, thank you, Regina. Uh, gracias. Tenemos muy, muy, mucho gusto de tenerte aquí. Uh, y tenemos a Mónica. Eh, Mónica eh, dice que está terminando su programa de maestría eh, también en la Universidad de Stanislaw. Eh, y este es programas de consejería en uh, uh, educación y termina en mayo. Uh, ella quiere ayudar a la gente, a los estudiantes a lograr sus metas eh, y le gusta eh, hacer ejercicio, uh, escribir en su libreta y ver películas de, en Netflix. Uh, y terceramente tenemos a Jennifer, que también es otra counselor intern. Um, eh, y como han mencionado, todos están, ab están abiertas a tener un intérprete si es posible. Uh, Jennifer es una, um, estudió en Delta College también y tiene su bachillerato de la Universidad de uh, University of the Pacific. Um, y ella uh, se enfatiza mucho también en, en la resiliencia, ¿verdad? Uh, que tiene uno y eso es la habilidad de que afrontar cosas en la vida y tener la resiliencia de seguir avanzando. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Well, um, I think in putting this presentation together, we assumed it was for college students only. At least I did. So I just, uh, I'll try to adapt that since you guys are all adults. <laughs> um, um, basically, I wanted to really start with just, uh, just transparency for the presentation. And, and this is just to kind of start, if we're going to talk about suicide and depression, we just wanted to really encourage the students or whoever the participants were that um, from, um, you know, for the title, Empowering, Empowering Women, just wanted to focus, you know, from a women's, woman's perspective, when we talk about risk of depression and suicide, there's there things women go through that men just don't. Or, um, so I just wanted to just list some of those things that are potential risk factors and, and just experiences of women um, that we have. As women, we're emotional beings. We're just created to be emotional. Um, uh, and, and, relationships and circumstances can affect women differently. Um, we may have the tendency to feel hopeless. Um, I think maybe because of perhaps stigma for women, um, maybe a stigma that you can't do anything. Um, we may feel depressed or loss of power. You know, we may have just disadvantaged feelings, um, you know, maybe due to gender multicultural factors. Um, maybe there's emotional abuses or financial abuse. Um, perhaps it's our own mindset um, and sometimes it's past trauma and just life experiences. So I list all those things to just kind of say, um, just to, to summarize that when we experience um, feelings of depression and thoughts of suicide, part of it is to take into consideration, I think, just factors of life that, that, that cause that sometimes. So um, And later on, we'll just explain the differences um, between depression symptoms and, you know, clinical depression, um, thoughts of suicide versus a plan for suicide. You know, the, um, those are a little bit more different. Um, and just, you know, just to, to share, what do we do? Um, you know, what can women do um, when they're feeling depressed or they're having these thoughts? Um, oh, I, you know, um, not a plan for suicide, but maybe a suicidal thought, feeling hopeless. You know, it, I think it's really important to just get your mind and body in the right place. Um, you know, go somewhere that is calm for you. Nature, maybe a swimming pool, um, somewhere by the water. These things really help your body. Um, and things that, you know, lower stress, music, nature, taking time for yourself. Um, and for women, what does that look like? <laughs> um, coffee time, some things with your girlfriends. 
um, you know, spa and nails, artwork, artwork and journaling are in there too for therapy, reaching out to others and community. So, um, you know, just as a woman, what do you need to de-stress uh, for you? And uh, as a man as well, what do you need to de-stress? <laughs> Definitely encourage, um, you know, these things as well. So just kind of wanted to open that up from um, just coming from, um, from women, uh, women's perspective. Thank you, Regina. Um, so, dice uh, Regina, eh, eh, ven aquí la, la eh, información. Uh, primero quiero, quiero reconocer la transparencia, transparencia ¿no? la importancia de, de tener transparencia. Este, vamos a hablar del, del suicidio y la depresión. Um, y siendo que es Empowering Women, vamos a concentrarnos en, en, en la perspectiva de la mujer. Um, eh, como mujeres, uh, son, eh, ustedes son seres emocionales. Uh, tienen la tendencia uh, quizás en, en ciertos casos sentirse uh, sin esperanza, ¿verdad? quizás con depresión, uh, experimentar a pérdida de poder y diferentes formas de abuso, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, uh, también vamos a hablar uh, un poquito de los síntomas de la depresión y, y de esos pensamientos de suicidio, ¿verdad? Uh, pero también uh, uh, Regina comparte de cómo cuando usted tiene esos uh, pensamientos, eh, ¿qué puede hacer, verdad? Entonces sugiere uh, algunas cosas como um, ir a, a donde tú te sientes a gusto, que es casa, uh, como un hogar para ti. Y ya puede ser como la naturaleza, ¿verdad? Puede ser um, el, el arte, uh, el estar en la comunidad, eh, llamándole a otras personas. Uh, entonces, la pregunta es, ¿qué tú necesitas para bajar tu estrés? Um, and, okay, so I'm going to do this really briefly. These are just pictures of risk of suicide from suicideprevention.org and uh, the website um, that talks about signs of, of suicide. Um, so, um, it, it, adults is the first picture and teens is the second. Basically, there's a lot of similarities. And this is just for risks of suicide um, that the website website shared. For adults, um, a little bit different, but somewhat the same. Putting your affairs in order. These are some of the signs that, you know, adult an adult is going down that path or thinking of committing suicide. They might prepare for that event. Um, and that might be noticeable. Um, they may have a lot of anxiety, but sudden changes in their life where it looks like they're going away. Um, also changes in sleep, obviously feeling hopeless, um, talking about suicide, and it's a little bit the same for teens too. Withdraw, obviously hopeless, maybe substance abuse within that um, neglect of you know their personal appearance their life uh, and changes as well that's extreme but um just these are these are signs lesser signs would just be the loneliness probably just behaviors that people are showing that they that maybe they're having thoughts of suicide or or maybe they're actually more severe and planning it and so those are just um things to just uh, be aware of with people and your discussions with them when that you see something is clearly wrong or they're clearly mentioning um, a lot of hopeless uh, statements those would be the signs you know to to um, to to look out for to if they were planning suicide or if they're thinking about it so a, a lot of detail there but um, just some points on suicide prevention so that completes that slide <laughs> Sí, thank you, Sabrina. I mean, uh, uh, Regina. Um, entonces dice Regina brevemente, uh, tiene aquí dos este, uh, imágenes de adultos a la izquierda, de la izquierda y adolescentes a la derecha, ¿no? Uh, son similares, pero en sí uh, comparten signos de lo que es el suicidio. Entonces, para los adultos estamos viendo unas cosas como eh, uh, ponen todas su, sus cosas, asuntos de su vida en orden. Empiezan a hacer eso. Um, esa es una indicación de, del suicidio, ¿verdad? Están pensando en eso. Uh, eh, se están preparando para un evento, ¿verdad? Right? Esos comportamientos. Uh, cambios en, 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 en cómo duermen eh, es otro indicador. Este, y, y, el, y el hablar del suicidio también es, es uh, otro, otro signo de poner atención. Para los adolescentes muy similar uh, es la pérdida de, 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 de interés por lo general, 
este, a, a la negligencia a su apariencia, ¿verdad? quizás you know, se viste mal o no, 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 no limpio, uh, y, y uh, una planeación más severa se puede observar. Este, y, y, y mencionan cosas eh, eh, que, que tienen que ver que no, donde no tienen esperanza, ¿verdad? So, okay. Back to you, Regina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to summarize. This is from our other uh, presentations we've given on depression, but I'll just summarize instead of really read a whole lot of it. This is according to the DSM-5, just when you're going to get a clinical diagnosis from a therapist. So just talking about then depression. So depression, you know, um, common features of depressive disorders are sad, empty, irrit irritable mood. There's changes in um, just cognitive behavior that affects a person's ability to function. And when it affects your ability to function, that's um, probably warrants a level for uh, being diagnosed with depression. Um, and depression can just be confused as well for, for normal sadness and grief. So just the experiences of being shut in because of COVID, we have these normal experiences of sadness and grief. That might not necessarily be a clinical diagnosis of depression, uh, but it could very well lead to that. Um, also, just loss, bereavement and loss in, in the green. Bereavement related depression, you can be really depressed because you lost someone, um, lost a family member, maybe someone passed. Those feelings are also emotions of, of um, depression. And so you may not ha have the clinical depression, but that is very normal to, um, to, to, to um, grieve a loss quite severely. So let's see, da, 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 da. yeah, that's it for that slide. <laughs> yeah. Eh, so aquí en esta eh, uh, slide eh, es lo que le llaman el DSM-5, que es realmente cuando un terapista le va a dar una, una diagnosis clínica. Uh, y ahí está hablando Regina de síntomas como eh, eh, um, el, el, comportamiento, el uh, comportamiento que es impactado por um, lo cognitivo, ¿no? Eh, entonces donde ya no, donde lo cognitivo le afecta. Y, y a su habilidad de funcionar, ya sea en el trabajo, en la escuela. Eh, puede um, experimentar uh, sentimientos de estar confundida este, uh, y tener sentimientos de tristeza o, 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 o de grief, que es como un duelo, ¿verdad? Entonces también en, en las letras verdes menciona de nuevamente como cuando alguien está de duelo, ¿verdad? Este, está, estamos viendo en cuanto al uh, proceso de la, la pérdida de alguien, Um, y, es, y eso es normal, ¿verdad? Eso es normal de tener um, un duelo cuando alguien pierde a alguien, ¿verdad? Entonces, nada más está describiendo esos ejemplos, ¿verdad? Thank you, Regina. Thank you. And then just, just to kind of summarize it again. Um, let's see, let me move this. Um, when you lose someone, it is, is grief and loss, but yes, the response can be confused with major depressive disorder. So major depressive disorder, um, Uh, sorry, grief and loss. Um, like I said, a response to significant loss may resemble um, a depressive episode, um, but of course it's very normal. And a major depressive episode, um, it, basically the, the, the feelings are emptiness and loss, and, but it is really a persistent depressed mood and the inability to anticipate happiness or pleasure. And so in that case, that's when somebody would want to get um, some intervention for that so that they can, so they can function um, at their best level. Um, so that once again, is just talking about the difference of grief and loss and then um, depression, which um, has a major depressive episode within that. But um, yes, grief and loss is very similar though as well. Okay, um, entonces aquí está hablando de Uh, lo que es uh, uh, grief and loss, que es uh, um, el, el duelo y la pérdida. Eh, entonces, esto puede ser en veces confundido con la depresión, ¿verdad? Que son cosas similares, pero no son iguales. Um, puede tener uno una, eh, un episodio de una, uh, algo depresivo uh, mayor, um, pero eso es diferente a tener... Uh, un, este, un sentimiento deprimido todo el tiempo. Entonces, si tiene ese sentimiento deprimido uh, por uh, 
consistentemente, persistentemente, es cuando quiere, quiere ver de tomar algo de, de ayuda, ¿verdad? Y aquí dice Heather algo en el chat, ¿verdad? I'm just going to capture what uh, Heather put in the chat. Uh, dice uh, Heather, en su experiencia como consejero, ella encuentra que hay mucho estigma uh, que alrededor de la salud mental, hasta la depresión, y en algunas culturas y familias. Uh, uh, no todo es reconocido como real, una enfermedad real, y uh, como algo como que es un signo de, eso lo ven uh, como un signo de, de debilidad, o le dicen, um, oh, you know, nada más este ya, you know, ya, 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 ya sobrepasa eso, no sobresale de eso. Um, o hasta, hasta le, le causa un temor por, um, porque no saben que, uh, que algo puede, que puede ser tratado, ¿verdad? Um, y, y, que, y, y que hay, um, eh, recovery es posible, la, la, la posibilidad de recuperarse está ahí. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Um, and so, before we get into our discussion, I also wanted to bring up um, just anxiety. I know we're talking a lot about depression, but anxiety is also really common, um, you know, among individuals, especially right now. So anxiety, how you can recognize that in your body, your body is reacting to a stressful, dangerous, or unfamiliar situations, um, usually uneasiness, distress, or dread before a significant event. Um, but for those suffering from anxiety disorder, um, it feels far from normal and can be debilitating in your life. So we also wanted to bring that up just so if you recognize these signs in your life or in a loved one's life. Um, below are different types of anxiety disorders, for example, social anxiety, um, if you have a fear of going out in public, um, being around a lot of people, um, generalized anxiety disorder, that's general among all aspects of your life, um, panic disorder, and social phobias. So I just wanted to bring up anxiety just because it can sometimes go hand in hand with depression. Uh, thank you, Monica. So, aquí nomás brevemente, yo sé, dice Monica, estamos hablando de la depresión, pero quiero reconocer la ansiedad. <clears throat> y la ansiedad este, um, eh, no es normal, ¿verdad? Necesariamente, y puede ser algo um, eh, debilitante en la vida de, de una persona. Entonces, <clears throat> les menciono eso para que presten um, atención a eso en su vida y también en la vida de otras personas. Y abajo hay ejemplos um, de, de tipos de ansiedad, ¿verdad? Hay ansiedad, um, un desorden de ansiedad social. Hay un este, desorden de ansiedad que es uh, gen general. Um, y hay un desorden de pánico y la fobia a, al mundo social. Thank you. Um, so we wanted to pause and reflect and have this as an open discussion for everyone. Um, so one of our first questions right up here is, if a loved one of yours was seriously depressed, what actions did you take that were helpful for yourself or for the other person? So you could be loved one or even for yourself. Um, uh, some other questions we have are, is there someone in your life right now who is depressed or had mentioned suicide? Um, what would you tell someone who you thought was seriously depressed? And what would you do if you felt suicidal or if a loved one felt suicidal? So it's kind of repetitive, but overall, how would you react or how have you coped? Um, and I think we're interested to hear how some of you um, coped or if you're experiencing anything right now. And like we said, this is a safe space if you want to share um, and get feedback from some of um, uh, the interns or Heather. Yeah, thank you, Monica. And um, if you could just stay on that page for just a minute. Mm -hmm. um, so, dice Monica, ahorita en este punto queremos abrir uh, la plática al grupo, ¿verdad? De Empowering Women. Este, y, y vamos a tener un momento de reflejar, pausar y tener una plática. Y hay unas preguntas aquí en la pantalla que usted puede ver. Y la primera dice, um, uh, uh, si un, uno que, alguien que usted ama fuera seriamente con, estuviera seriamente con depresión, ¿qué acciones usted tomó eh, para ayudarle a, a, a usted mismo o para esa persona. Eh, la otra, la primera pregunta dice, ¿hay alguien en su vida ahorita que tiene depresión o que ha mencionado algo del suicidio? Uh, ¿Qué le diría a alguien uh, eh, ah. que, está, que, que piensa usted que está seriamente con depresión? ¿Y, y qué, le diría, qué le diría o qué haría 
a, a, con alguien que se siente como hacer ten, a, atentar el suicidio uh, o si un, uh, o alguien que usted ama se sintiera con pensamiento de suicidio. Entonces, realmente nada más queremos abrir este espacio en confianza para ver uh, eh, uh, cómo usted responde, respondiera o, o cómo está respondiendo si está en, en esa temporada en, en su vida. Y de nuevo, este es un espacio um, en confianza, todo es confidencial y queremos abrir este um, eh, foro para todo el grupo para platicar. And I would say, please feel free to share in the chat as well, if you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and even if it has nothing to do with these questions, maybe it's with anxiety or just coping in general with COVID. I think just any support that we can provide, I think we're here for that. Sí, entonces ahorita eh, Mónica los está invitando a, si quieren poner eso en el chat y, y no necesariamente tienen que ser estas preguntas, ¿verdad? Si usted está ahorita batallando con lo que es el covid Um, o, o, o con todos estos, estos cambios y no tiene que estar concentrado en la depresión puede ser quizás tiene ansiedad o, o otras cosas entonces estamos aquí para, para para tener esa plática y que nos hagan preguntas uh, so I, I captured something in the chat um, and, uh, alguien uh, Katrina pone en el chat honestamente yo siento como que todos en mi vida están deprimidos ahorita por lo del COVID-19 Oh, so it, I should, honestly, I feel like everyone in my life is depressed right now because of COVID-19, um, except for G, uh, Katrina. Yeah. I agree. It's kind of hard to not hear about it or think about it. And, you know, just everyone you see, even at the store, it's, it's always like a topic that's brought up and you know, can't help it kind of dim your spirits a little bit. Yeah. yeah, so you definitely can't get away from what's mm -hmm. going on. It's everywhere. Sí, yes. Entonces, Mónica lo reconoce, ¿verdad? Dice que um, eh, es difícil escapar um, esas pláticas, ¿verdad? Del COVID, ¿verdad? En la tienda o cuando uno sale, siempre están ahí. Entonces, reconoce que, que si está ahí, es difícil escapar eso. I would like to know you know, I know this, this is a group that's empowering women and the focus is on, um, is on women, but you know, what Regina had spoken about earlier about how sometimes the experiences of women can be, you know, not that men don't have difficulties or challenges and they're not emotional, but because women tend to be created to be more the nurturers, the caretakers. And I know that in um, many times it's like, we don't even really stop to ask ourselves, how am I feeling or how am I doing? We're so busy making sure everyone else around us is okay. You know, taking care of our children, taking care of our spouses or our family members, making sure that, you know, everyone else is doing okay. We often put our own self at the bottom of that list, and we don't really stop and even ask ourselves, like, how am I doing? Um, you know, so I don't know if that's true for you, but I'm a mom, and I have, you know, you know, I know that I've had to actually give myself permission, I guess you can say, to take care of myself, because I realized that if I didn't take care of myself, that I wasn't really able to take care of anyone else around me that I had to put my needs and my self-care as a priority so that I could be available and able to help take care of those around me. So how are, how are all of you feeling around that? Do you feel like you have difficulties being women, being caretakers, having those roles where you kind of maybe tend to put yourself at the bottom of that list of priority? Um, so um, uh, can you say that in Spanish? No, I'm just kidding. Ah, I know, um, can I say that in Spanish? <laughs> I wish, I wish. Dice, dice Heather que una pregunta para el grupo, ¿verdad? And um, there's a couple of things in the chat as well. I'll get to it in a minute. Pero dice Heather, you know, este grupo se llama Empodereciendo Mujeres, Empowering Women. Entonces dice Heather, um, you know, muchas veces para la mujer, ¿verdad? Um, este, no es que los hombres no tengan sentimientos, pero la mujer, por ejemplo, toma el rol uh, de ser cuidadora también de, de, del hogar, de la familia. Y muchas veces como mujer, uh, uno se puede poner uh, mero abajo en la lista de prioridades, ¿verdad? Entonces, por lo menos Heather dice, esto es en mi caso. Y, y dice, uh, hasta medio escalofrío, dice, um, y me tengo que dar permiso uh, a, a mí misma para 
a eh, que yo me atienda, ¿verdad? Porque si yo no me atiendo, entonces yo no puedo atender a los demás, ¿verdad? No sé si hay alguna reflexión o comentarios. Just asking for commentary or reflections on that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, the, the one of the, the problems we have right now is uh, we're telling the students go for tutoring because I know they need to, to learn Canvas, they need to, to learn a new material, they have a lot of things to do. And now, in, I asked all the well, you have to go for tutoring, you can help you there. But they say, I have no time. The, and for me, it's, you have to make time for yourself. And maybe for me, it's easy to tell them, you have to make time because you're a student, you're an adult, you have to be responsible with your studies, then there is no choice, you have to make. Uh, what else can I tell them be, besides that? Because for me, for me, I have to, it's a way to encourage them, to tell them you have to make time for yourself, you have to make time for your studies, you have to make time for your homework, but they don't do it. The, uh, the students, the teachers send the email, have you talked to this student that is not, is not doing well in the class? And I contact the student and they say, well, I have no time for tutoring. And I tell the teacher, well, they, ha they say I have no time for tutoring. And this is, is a cycle there. Uh, what kind of help can we, can I offer them or what can tell them besides make time for that? Because it's not working. I think this is a perfect plug in, that I will give for Regina and Monica and even for um, for Jennifer, who's not in on this call, on this Zoom meeting today, but one of our other uh, counseling interns. Very good question because this is where, um, it's kind of like helping someone, you, you know, you can tell someone do this, mm -hmm. but if they already knew how to do it, they'd be doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you can't, you have to be able to say, you know, if, if, if sit, like take care of yourself or make time for this. I mean, if they, if they had the ability or the, to do certain things, then they probably would already be doing it. A lot of it is, is being able to really go a step deeper with that and helping them kind of understand, you know, what's going on? What are the barriers in your life right now? Give me an example of what a typical day looks like for you. What are the things that you're responsible for today? What are, give me an idea, have them sit down and jot down a, a schedule of their day and where they're spending their time or, you know, just basic things to kind of coach them through so they could see it and be able to see like, oh, you know, I didn't realize that, that, that I, you know, if I could maybe make some adjustments here and then maybe I could do this or, you know, or just getting to the psychological aspect of why is it that you don't feel that you're important enough to make time for what is going on that you feel that you cannot make yourself a priority to take care of yourself so it could be just a practical giving tools or it could be even a little deeper than that where that could be, require a little more counseling and coaching to really get to the underlying reasons for why someone isn't making time to take care of the things that they know they need to take care of because we see this happening all the time with somebody that knows that they need to make changes in their health. They might need to do things that, that they know are very critically important, but they just do not make those a priority. And so a lot of that is a lot of motivation. A lot of it, it could be coaching, but really helping them. And that's the, those are the skills that um, come from, um, that counselors can really help with. And I know that Monica and Regina could probably attest to, to how they work with individuals and really help and coach them through those things to get to help them with some tools and practical ways to, to manage their lives. Thank you, Heather. Um, so, uh, voy a traducir. Uh, so, Sabrina um, compartió, con su permiso, Sabrina, o si quiere traducir como guste. Uh, eh, bueno, yo le estaba preguntando a Heather que cómo le puedo hacer con estudiantes que la maestra me manda un email y me dice, no están este, haciendo el trabajo, no están mandándome tareas. Entonces, yo le hablo al estudiante, el estudiante me dice es que no tengo tiempo. Entonces, yo lo único que le puedo decir, lo único que les digo es, pues tienes que hacer tiempo porque eres estudiante y tienes que hacer la tarea si no vas a reprobar. Entonces la pregunta era, ¿qué más les puedo decir? ¿Qué más puedo hacer en este caso para ayudar a los estudiantes? ¿Y la respuesta fue, Sergio? Ya, yeah, eso, la respuesta de Heather fue, es que uh, muchas veces, este, dice Heather, si los estudiantes supieran eh, qué hacer o cómo hacerlo, ellos este, lo harían, ¿verdad? Entonces, 
lo que podemos hacer en este caso, uh, o si fueran capaces de hacerlo, lo harían. Um, tenemos que uh, explorar uh, y ver para ayudar al, al estudiante y entender qué está pasando en su vida y cuáles responsabilidades tienen que no la dejan en este ejemplo ir a, a, a recibir tutoría. ¿Verdad? Tenemos que ser como un coach, un entrenador uh, para el estudiante um, y uh, hacerlos ver sus responsabilidades de nuevo que, que, que no los dejan ir a la tutoría. Um, eh, dice Heather, este, tenemos que ver cua, cuál, qué está pasando con ese estudiante, por qué ellos se sienten que no pueden hacer tiempo para ellos mismos y quizás pueda ser um, una respuesta donde uh, 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 es algo técnico que tiene que cambiar o uh, nos puede llevar a cosas más profundas que tenemos que ver, ¿verdad? De, de por qué ese estudiante no está haciendo tiempo para, para ese, esa, ese elemento de tutoría, ¿verdad? En este ejemplo. Mm. Back to you, Heather. And, and, and there's some things in the chat, so I'll, I'll be happy to capture them in the meantime. Eh, so, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Monica. Go for it. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, oh. Maybe we can, because this part of the discussion, if you want to. Okay, yeah. In the chat. Nomás quería compartir lo que Daphne en el chat puso, oof, right? De lo que compartió anteriormente. <laughs> Uh, también, uh, oh my, there's so many things. Uh, so Diana dijo anteriormente, uh, so she, Diana says, what is the relationship between anxiety and, and certain disorders in the body que no son, who are not diagnosed with a medical cause? Maybe, maybe for the entrance. So, uh, so dice uh, Diana, ¿cuál es la relación entre ansiedad y ciertos desórdenes en el cuerpo que no son diagnosticados con causa médica. Like physical symptoms or like any other? Uh, Diana pregunta como síntomas físicos. Yes. Mm. So I would say, um, according to the DSM, um, there is a criteria, I don't have it in front of me, but it does have some physical symptoms of, um, you know, sweating, shaking, um, your heart palpitations increasing. Um, um, to a point, it can also be dissociation. If someone's mind keeps running, um, they may be outside of their body. It, it's just, it can be different in different severities, but those are some physical symptoms that anxiety can manifest itself in a body. Yeah, so dice Monica que uh, unos síntomas que se pueden manifestar en el cuerpo um, es este, el sudar, Um, el estar temblando, um, la des, 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 desasociación de tus pensamientos y lo que hace tu cuerpo, um, y tener un corazón que está palpitando muy duro, ¿verdad? Um, and so the next question in the chat is uh, from Daphne, um, and it says, pienso que platicar es una buena forma de ir solucionando. I think that talking about things is a good uh, form to uh, find solutions. And Maricela says in Spanish, Realmente agradezco esta plática que me ha hecho reflexionar y sentirme mejor, ya que, ya que así exactamente me siento. El estrés diario, las clases en línea, el COVID golpeando a mi familia, um, me hace sentir devastada y, y pensando en, en claudicar algunas veces. Uh, muchas gracias por estas palabras que me... Uh, que me han retroalimentado uh, y dado fuerza para seguir adelante. So Marisela is saying, um, truly, I, I, I am grateful for this discussion. Um, it has helped me re reflect and feel better about myself um, as someone who uh, is, uh, feels exactly like this. Um, the daily stress, the, cl the online classes, uh, the COVID that uh, ha has impacted her family, Um, has uh, made her feel devastated and has thought of quitting sometimes. Um, so thank you very much uh, for these, these words that have um, uh, fed me, uh, have served as, as great feedback um, and have strengthened, strengthened me um, to keep moving forward. That's from Anisela. Uh, and then seguimos, Diana um, says, very, very, muy cierto lo que dice Heather y yo llamo 
yo lo llamo ser egoísta al darnos ese permiso. So she says, um, it's very true what Heather mentions. And I sometimes call it um, uh, uh, like um, having an ego uh, when in reality, you know, it's giving ourselves permission. Um, yes, excellent mensaje, excellent message. And then we had captured something from Blanca. Excellent information, thank you, Heather. Uh, and Daphne again says, exacto, uh, ir más fondo, ¿qué pasa con el estudiante para brindarnos la ayuda? Um, so it says, ex exactly, um, uh, we have to go more, more in depth to see what's going on with the student to give them help. And el último, el último comentario, the last comment here, it's, uh, um, ¿qué hacer si, si una persona no siente que está pasando por un cuadro uh, de depresión y no desea buscar ayuda. So what happens uh, um, when someone uh, is does not feel uh, in a in a box of depression and does not uh, wish to ask for help to look for help. Um, what happens if somebody doesn't want to ask for help? Um, and they don't acknowledge themselves to, they don't think of themselves as being in a box of depression. Mm -hmm. Well, I think everyone can handle stress differently. Everybody has a different perspective. Um, but from an outsider's perspective, if you see someone that is not reaching out for help and you know that they're not doing well, that's frustrating for the other person. Mm -hmm. um, but for the person that doesn't see that, then they, it may not be at a level where they think that they need help. They might not see it as a problem. Or if they do see it as a problem, they don't want to um, address it. And they're, maybe they're not ready or maybe they don't ever want to. And so that's just, that's kind of the way it goes. And you just need to be a, a support for those people in a way that you can maintain your own health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah, very so. difficult. It's very difficult to be in a situation, especially when an individual is one that we um, is a loved one, um, someone close to us that we care about. Um, it's hard enough when when we have it be a coworker or maybe even a student that we're working with, and we don't necessarily have that very close, but we still feel that sense of care and concern because we see and identify with what's going on with them, but they aren't ready. We we talk about readiness for change, and this actually came to mind when. Um, when with a prior comment that was made by Sergio, um, whenever we go through changes or are going to make a change in our lives, it, 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 there's a process of being ready for that change. Does that make sense? So we can think about it, like say, like, for, example, say for example, there's someone that knows that they need to go, they, they're for health reasons, they know that they need to maybe um, start exercising, or maybe they need to lose some weight because it's causing them some health problems. They know that they have to do this because the information is right there in front of them. So their doctor has told them they're, they're, they're experiencing all of the symptoms and signs of say di pre-diabetic, or maybe they're, um, they're overweight and it's causing them to have other health issues. So they know what they need to do, but they're not ready yet to make that change. So until they are ready and really ready to make that change, they're not going to make, nothing is going to happen. So no matter how much you're telling them that they need to do it, you know, you're pushing them to do it or, you know, putting it in the front of them that they need to do it, they have to verse acknowledge and be ready to make those changes. And so it's, that's the very, that's the very much the, um, the difficulty with being a coach and being a counselor for somebody that's in your own family. That's why it's usually easier to have an outside person be that person to coach them because they can kind of have a little bit more separation, but um, it is about readiness for change because change is change and change is not easy, even if it's positive change. And this is why we've gone through so much of stress and anxiety over all the changes we've had to make. When I first found out that I had to put my classes online and had to um, do my counseling appointments through Zoom, I went in my closet and closed the door and went, had a breakdown crying, literally crying. I did no, I had no idea how I was going to do this. I don't know anything about Canvas. I don't know anything about I'm not really techie with the computer and I'm like, how am I going to do this? Oh my gosh. You know, I'm being asked to do something and I just broke down and just cried. But then I just had to 
take a deep breath and it's like, okay, what, what I'm ready. I, I have to do this, you know, and I'm ready for this. So really with anything, you know, we have to be in that mindset of being ready for it. And when that person that you love and care about is ready, you're going to be there to help hold their, their hand and walk them through that process. Um, reaching out for help. Only a doctor or clinician can really diagnose clinical depression, clinical anxiety. So the first step is that the person might just need to get assessed by someone that can give a diagnosis or maybe even finding out from them, what are the barriers or what is preventing you from taking a step forward? If we could talk about that, maybe we can address some of those things. I find that it could be everything from being ashamed to not having family support to being afraid. I've had people say, well, if I go in and I find out that I'm depressed, then that means that I might have to go on medication and I don't want to take medication. And I don't, I'm afraid that that's going to be a lifelong condition. If I have to start this, I'll never get out of it. I mean, there's all kinds of fears that keep people immobilized from moving forward. So sometimes just addressing what some of those fears are and helping them feel more comfortable around what to expect and what the unknown is, then they're able to, you're able to help them talk through that. So I don't know if, if Regina and Monica have anything to add to that, but there's a lot of reasons why people aren't really ready. And sometimes just helping them understand what those reasons are by asking them questions about of where they're at and meeting them where they're at is, is going to be a good way to help them. But certainly if you're feeling that they're at risk of hurting themselves, you do, have to, you do have to take immediate action. It's never okay if you see that somebody is, you always want to take serious someone that's making thoughts or is showing signs of having ideas of, of killing themselves, of ending their life, of, of taking their life. Um, any signs that they're um, contemplating or making a plan or have talked about death and dying or talked about hurting themselves or talked about ending it or I don't want to live anymore or anything that alludes to the fact that they might be considering suicide. Um, you don't want to wait for them to be ready for change. You want to take immediate action because that's going to be saving their life. And you don't want to, you know, you don't want to take lightly any any signs that a person is, um, it might be at risk. You definitely want to get them to help immediately. Uh, thank you, Heather. That's great. And just a quick time check. We're at 1130. Um, so I'll translate this and I don't know if the, the group wants to continue or, and also to be respectful for your time. Uh, so nomás voy a traducir lo que dijo Regina y Heather. Uh, son las once y media. No sé si el grupo quiera continuar y si los consejeros pueden. Pero este decía Regina en cuanto a la pregunta, eh, dice, hay diferentes niveles de estrés. Uh, eh, entonces uno tiene que ver uh, de la perspectiva uh, de afuera verdad eh, y eh, si la persona no este no ve que ella o él tiene depresión eh, muchas veces desafortunadamente así es como es y uno tiene que brindarle el mejor apoyo que uno pueda uh, y Heather eh, dio también mucha información buena dice a veces es uno de nuestros que, uh, personas que más amamos entonces tenemos que identificar por qué ellos no están listos este, uh, hay un concepto que dice estar listo para el cambio uh, y el cambio es un proceso y es un proceso donde um, uno necesita prepararse para ello entonces Heather daba el, el ejemplo de, este, del ejercicio ¿no? cuando o tú sabes uh, que necesitas hacer ejercicio la, informa está, la información está ahí entonces tú sabes que lo tienes que hacer Um, uh, de nuevo este, um, a ese concepto donde uno no está listo para el cambio entonces ahí tenemos que también reconocer uh, que, que para que uno tiene que eh, um, estar listo para hacer uh, tales cambios en su vida um, llevan, llevándonos nuevo al concepto de, de readiness for change, de que tiene que estar listo para el cambio, el cambio no es fácil, aunque sea un cambio para bien, no es fácil y Heather lo reconoce. Uh, ella usa el ejemplo de sus clases cuando se, se fueron al internet, ¿no? Um, este, estuvo tanta dificultad una vez que you know, se puso a llorar. Entonces dijo, ok, vamos, vamos a averiguar esto, ¿verdad? Eh, tienes que tener una, un pensamiento eh, de estar preparada. Es, y uh, de, de, de nuevo, um, todo, solo los doctores pueden diagnosticar una, una enfermedad mental. Um, eh, y, y en ese ramo también pues tenemos que ver qué es lo que está a, deteniendo a esa persona de tomar un, un paso hacia adelante. 
uh, eh, y tenemos que um, investigar los miedos. Este, muchas veces uh, no sabemos por qué esa persona no quiere cambiar eh, y hay varios miedos. Entonces, este, tenemos que entender las razones. Um, eh, y de nuevo, no, uno tiene que actuar de inmediatamente si esa persona se quiere lastimar a ella misma o lastimar a otros. Um, o si, si están hablando de, del suicidio o más si tienen un plan de cómo quitarse la vida, eso requiere acción inmediata. ¿verdad? Entonces, ahí, ahí no es para eh, esperar a que esté lista la persona o, o investigar las razones por qué no está lista. O si se, este, la persona se quiere quitar la vida dañar de alguna manera a ella o él o a otras personas, eso tiene un plan de suicidio, eso ya es para tomar acción inmediata. Heather, what will be the, that immediate action that we have to take if somebody is really depressed and we know that it's going to hurt themselves? So, uh, as, uh, you know, so if you're, if you are obviously the, the, if you are working with a student or you have somebody that you, that's come to you and um, if it's a matter of it being a, a student that's just in crisis, that's, that's having a difficult time, you want to make a referral for them for follow up by a counselor or um, one of our interns, we could, we can certainly do that. But when we're talking about the level of where that person seems to be an immediate harm to hurting themselves or someone else, there's two things that you can do. You can can, what I would probably do first is I would contact um, campus police that are there 24 seven campus police are trained to do what they call welfare checks because we're in a COVID environment. Um, you can report that to campus police and just say that you identify who you are and explain to them um, the, the interaction that you've had with a student that you're very fearful that this person might be at a place of being able, you know, uh, risk of suicide um, or hurting themselves. Um, and they will actually um, be able to go and do a welfare check on that person. Okay. okay. If it's someone that has family support around and you are able to get them to go to um, behavioral health, um, that's um, 1212 California Street, which is our behavioral health department to do an in-person intake. There's also St. Joseph's that will do a 24 hour. They have a crisis intake for, for, um, for mental health as well. So um, they can go to St. Joseph's emergency. They can go to um, 1212 California Street, or they could show up to the nearest emergency room. If someone's suicidal and they show up to the ER, it doesn't matter. The ER will do a, they will have a psychiatrist or a, or, a, or a clinician do an evaluation. And if necessary, they will put them on a hold to hold them there to, for observation until they could be released, depending on how severe the, the, they assess them and determine that they might need to be held, um, you know, for that. We've had, um, in this recent COVID situation, I've actually had a number of students that have had to be admitted for our 72-hour holds. 24-hour holds is like a day, and then a 72-hour hold is about the maximum that you can do, which is a three-day hold. But, um, but what a lot of times will happen with that is that that person for the first time will definitely be able to get the help that they need. So whether that be um, being referred out to an outpatient setting to where they could start getting treatment for whatever it is that's caused them to be depressed or have that going on, it could be early signs of a mental health, mental illness that's happening, um, can be triggered by depression. I mean, that's another conversation that will take us in a different direction, but we know that trauma and stress could actually be triggers for more severe mental illnesses. Um, onset of mental illnesses can be, uh, manifest themselves um, more commonly between the ages of 18 and 24, first onset of signs. And we're talking about um, more psychosis, schizophrenia, um, bipolar disorder, which is a, a a form of depression where you have extreme highs and then you have extreme lows. Those are all more um, clinical diagnosis require, requiring a clinical diagnosis. But again, if a person is suicidal or exhibiting that, that's kind of like a warning sign or a red flag to get that person help because then from there they can be properly assessed and then be able to be put into the right treatment, whatever that is that they're needing. But do I need to ask the permission from the person? No, you do not. When a person, no, if a person is exhibiting signs of suicide, you do not need to ask their permission. They're not in a right frame of mind to give you permission. Okay. <laughs> you know, when yeah. somebody is at that place, they're not thinking rationally. 
So you have to remember that, that you want to be respectful, obviously, especially if this is a loved one or family member. But if this is a student, if this is a, if this is a coworker, um, you, you're, you can express your concern and you can let them know what your plan is to do. Um, and what I've often had to do is I will say to the student, um, you know, I'm, um, I'm very concerned about your well-being right now. Um, I can either accompany you to go down to, to be seen and checked in to behavioral health to be assessed. I can, I can arrange for you to be transported there. Um, or I can, um, you know, depending on what happens, if the person's willingly able to go on their own, then you don't really need to necessarily get involved if they're willing to go on their own. Um, and that's the best case scenario is if they identify that they need that help and they're willing to go get that help themselves. But if they're not, and you're still very concerned, then that's when you probably should notify campus police and they would have to do a, what they would have to do is a, is a welfare check on that person. And then they can make the determination if they need to escort that person into, um, into, uh, into the ER. Okay. Okay. I think it's a very, it's a very hard thing when you're faced with that, but it's always good to think about it ahead of time to know what your plan is. Um, and, you know, be able to kind of know, cause it, it, it can be scary, but it, but at the same time, when you think about it, you want to take it seriously because you really don't know when someone and, and unfortunately, um, I will have to say this. I am, I've actually had two, three um, suicides that I know of within people that I'm aware of in, in my sphere, not within my family, but friends of our family, um, three young people that have committed suicide in the last few months. So one of them was the, was the nephew of one of our faculty members um, that took his life. And, um, and another was another family member. And these are individuals um, that if you just looked at them on the surface, you would have never known that they were struggling. Um, you know, you would have, you, you, the, they say the warning signs are always there. Um, it's just that sometimes we don't see them or they're not, they're not recognized to the extent that, um, that we take it seriously. But normally in hindsight, people can look back and, and see that there were signs there because they say that almost in every case of a suicide, there's, there, there's warning signs. So here's some resources. Um, thank you, Monica, for putting those up. Um, there's the um, Wellness Center. I also put in the chat box a link to um, Saint, uh, to the county's uh, hotlines and um, for um, and it was a page in the chat. So if you just click that link, you'll be able to go to that page that lists a lot of the phone numbers and um, places that you can go for help, and it's including the suicide hotline. So actually, if we could go back to that slide really quick, Monica, for just, just a second. Mm -hmm. So this is the Suicide and Mental Health Resources. So this is um, Mr. Michael Fields. He's the executive director down at the bottom. You can email him directly. And he pointed us towards these two great resources, Peer Recovery Services. Um, if there's a wellness center um, of San Joaquin County and also the Manteca Wellness Center. And you can also get on their monthly newsletter, which you can have a lot of this information. And they have uh, things in person or virtually. So these are two locations of that. And then yes, obviously the, the website there too, like Heather mentioned. Mm -hmm. And um, NAMI, Michael Fields is the, um, he's the executive director of, of, of the Wellness Center, but he's also the president of the National Alliance on Mental Illness, which is NAMI, San Joaquin County. And NAMI has, if you go to NAMI's website, NAMISanJoaquin.org, you will find that they actually have peer-to-peer -peer support groups virtually going on right now that are in Spanish. Oh, and we're getting ready to start one for the LGBTQ community. They're started, they have a facilitator that will be start, starting shortly. There's family to family groups that are offered um, online right now and in person, but we do have a Spanish group that meets as well through NAMI. So that's something um, I can go ahead and pass that information on to you. But if you go onto the website for NAMI, San Joaquin County, you'll be able to um, be able to find out the days and times of those different groups and when they meet. Okay, and then this was our suicide hotline resources. Like we mentioned before, we talked about suicide a little bit. So uh, we know that you guys wanted us to talk about suicide and depression. This is specifically for suicide. There's lots of um, options of emergency to call. Uh, you know, the call National Suicide Prevention Line. There's an English and Spanish. 
There's a crisis text line, um, International Association for Suicide Prevention. You can take a picture with your phone. Veterans, the San Joaquin County, NAMI, and then the Wellness Center and the Manteca Wellness Center is mentioned again at the bottom. Um, great. So, Sabrina, ¿puedo, inter puedo interpretar todo bien en breve? Si no sé yes, Miss. Yeah, no, I'm just going to take a moment to translate everything. Um, eh, como, puedo, como pueden ver ahorita en la pantalla, esta es la página de eh, líneas que llaman en inglés hotlines de crisis. Uh, y tienen ahí varias. Abajo tienen el, el uh, Wellness Center de San Joaquin County, eh, Manteca Wellness Center. Uh, son números que usted puede llamar. Eh, el, el County Warm Line y el uh, San Joaquin County Crisis Line son de, uh, líneas de, de prevención. Um, and I don't know if you can go back to the previous slide. Yes, we go. Yeah, y ahí era otra página de recursos de edad. Eh, dice ni Michael Fields, es el eh, um, director ejecutivo del uh, Peer Recovery de Servicios de, de Recuperación, ¿verdad? Entonces, este, um, uh, está ahí el Mantico Wellness Center de nuevo y el, uh, el Wellness Center de San Joaquin County. Todos son recursos a los que ustedes pueden ir. Uh, la pregunta de, de Sabrina, creo, si me acuerdo bien, era de qué podemos hacer uh, cuando alguien está, eh, you know, qué, qué acción hacemos. Uh, antes se habló de tomar una acción, ¿verdad? En casos donde la persona se quiere quitar la vida o, o dañar a otra persona. Sabrina preguntó, ¿qué, ¿cuál acción es esa, verdad? Entonces, Heather dijo, este, uh, es una, primero es una acción inmediata y eso sería llamar a la policía. Uh, y la, lo que la policía del colegio va a hacer, le llaman un well, welfare check. Um, va, va a ver cómo está esa persona. Usted puede llamar, identificarse a sí misma eh, y este, expresar el, el, los miedos que tiene y, que, y, y el riesgo que usted está viendo en la persona. Um, eh, también puede eh, este, ir al, a 1212 California Street. Um, creo que es el Behavioral Health, um, Departamento de Salud uh, y Bienestar. Uh, está la iglesia de St. Joseph's que tiene un departamento de crisis. Uh, y también hay, hay, hay lugares donde pueden poner a una persona en una, en una, como en un um, estado de espera eh, de 24 horas o a un máximo, que es um, un día, o a un máximo de 72 horas, que son tres días. Y en esas situaciones la persona puede agarrar la, la ayuda que realmente necesita. Um, este... Um, también este, uh, you know, hay, pues hay, hay cosas más profundas como el trauma y el estrés, ¿verdad? Que, que, que son, le, en inglés le llaman un onset de otras, um, que puede uh, desatar otras enfermedades mentales como la esquizofrenia y otras cosas. Um, si la persona um, eh, es uh, um, alguien que se quiere suicidar, este, necesita eh, agarrar ayuda para esa persona inmediatamente no ocupa pedirle permiso uh, porque ellos no están en un eh, estado mental para, para decirle sí, si sí, habla para ayuda o no, no hables. Entonces la responsabilidad de uno es de, de, de llamar inmediatamente a la policía para ayuda. Este, um, no, no, no necesitan el permiso de la persona. Uh, le pueden dejar saber, mira, yo me estoy preocupado por, por ti. Um, eh, tengo un plan de hablar a la policía para tu bienestar y, y hacerlo, ¿verdad? Um, y también uh, conozca y sepa cuál es su plan para ayudar a aquella persona. Um, y Heather compartió situaciones donde hubo uh, personas que se suicidaron, personas que conocidos. Y eran personas que si usted las ve, todo normal, todo bien. Uh, y dicen que los signos son reconocibles, pero pues no todo el tiempo, ¿verdad? Entonces... Ya enfatizamos los recursos. También mencionan a NAMI, que es National Alliance for Mental Illness. Y este una organización en San Joaquín. Y ya tienen grupos de español, grupos de apoyo. Back to you guys. Thank you so much. Aurora, ¿tienes una pregunta? Sí, um, yo quería compartir mi experiencia. Eh, algunos estudiantes se han comunicado conmigo eh, y ya nada más me quiero poner a sus órdenes y tienen la confianza de que yo los puedo ayudar a que agarren ayuda, a canalizarlos. Aquí estoy, mi nombre es Aurora, eh, soy una líder en Empower Woman y ya puse mi número de teléfono 
en el, nada más quería que me conocieran todos y presentarme para que sepan con quién van a hablar y que están en confianza y todo es confidencial. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so she was just a, uh, an empowering women uh, staff volunteer and just uh, offering her services to be a, a bridge to resources for folks. Gracias, Aurora. No, de nada. Disculpen si me permiten. Uh, Mayra, puedes compartir. Tenemos uh, los teléfonos de las um, líderes que también estamos comprometidas y queremos uh, dejar nuestro teléfono por si sienten confianza de hablarnos y nosotros podemos uh, también referirlos, ¿verdad? Entonces, adelante. Aquí, si quieren tomar una foto, aquí están nuestros teléfonos para que si sienten uh, confianza de contactarnos y nosotros los hacemos llegar a las oficinas adecuadas para que tengan la ayuda que necesitan. Gracias. Gracias, Maricela. And uh, just Maricela is just sharing information of, of members of Empowering Women staff that uh, are happy to help um, connect people with resources. Yeah, there, in case we have a students that uh, they mentioned that they need help, can we refer it to you or to Regina, to any one of you, Monica? Yes. It has to be directly to you. Heather and then you send them no, to the you you're able I don't have mind you you are able to make a direct referral to the interns yes Regina and Monica yes you can make a direct referral to them um, and you can do that. Regina, you can speak on that, but you can also, um, you can also direct them. Um, there is a referral form that we use in the counseling that's on the counseling website that we um, like to have our faculty and staff and others use for making referral because that just gives us a little information about who the student is, best way to contact them. And it also lets us know that they've given you consent for us to reach out to them. Um, sometimes it's not required that you have their consent, but it just makes it nice because because it is, the student is expecting us to reach out to them. They are knowing that someone's going to be calling them or emailing them to set up a time to, to make that appointment. So those are for non-crisis type of things. So, you know, anything short of somebody is exhibiting signs of immediate harm or threat of harm to themselves or others, you can do a referral. Um, if somebody is at the place of, again, harming themselves or others, then you want to directly go directly to campus police for that. Um, but you can either make it through the referral form, send that into counseling. Um, we ask that it go to the counseling department. You can send it to Jill Doberpool as high priority or to the Dean of Counseling. You could send it to myself. The only thing problem with sending it to me is that um, is that counselors don't always work the same hours every day. And so when my workday ends, say at four o'clock, sometimes I'm off my computer. So I may not get that referral that day. I may not get it till the next morning when I go back on. Whereas if you send it to the counseling department, there's usually somebody there that can see, get that form and respond to it immediately. So um, do, you, do you understand what I mean? Because sometimes it's, it's very difficult in this virtual world to know who's at work, yeah. who's, not, who's not at work, who's on their computer. And so we wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to reach out to someone that's expecting someone to, to, to take action on that referral right away. So, but yeah, yeah. So that, there's no one right way to make a referral. If you want to send it directly to me, if you want to directly to send it to Regina or to Monica, you can contact them directly. It's, it's just getting them to that help is the most important thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for allowing us this time to be here. And I just want to say a huge thank you to Monica and Regina for the yeah. two of you for putting together this PowerPoint and for your expertise and your time that you've spent to organize this information for us. Very, very powerful. Um, and I'm glad that we've had a chance to have the conversation. And it's a very deep conversation and one that you just can't touch on everything in just one, one hour and a half session. So we are more than welcome, uh, happy to come back at another time. Yeah. Um, if you want to have another continuing conversation around this, um, please let us know. We're always here to help you and to be a resource for you. Um, so just let us know if that's something that you would like. We didn't even have time to get to all of the other campus resources. Uh, Katrina has left the call already, but even if you would like us to come back just to share and talk about some of the other resources that we have available, like the Talk Campus app and, um, and the um, other things that we have, we can definitely come back and do that as well. Yes, thank we you. We do so have on, I didn't know if you guys wanted to take a picture on the slide. There's some more resources on a few more slides uh, that Delta has listed on their website at the counseling website. So we have that. I didn't know if anyone wanted to take a picture of that. That's still the last part of our slide. 
as far as resources go. So Can you go ahead and share that slide? Because I don't have it on my screen. Do you want to go ahead and put that on there? And they could take a picture of it and at least have that. Perfect. So that's what um, Delta uh, offers, different websites. And then this is a therapist down at the very bottom. This was geared towards students, but she's also helpful, a therapist that does a lot of uh, simplified videos. So, um, but here's what Delta offers. Sí, estos son más recursos de lo que ofrece este, el, el colegio de Delta. Este, así le quieren tomar una foto. Uh, y brevemente, um, nada más para ser muy breve, de, hablaba Heather antes de, de la... Eh, puede, usted puede hacer una referencia um, al, al, aquí al colegio de Delta College para consejería, um, sea con Heather, con los, con los interns, uh, pero lo puede someter al departamento de consejería uh, en casos que no sean crisis uh, y de nuevo verdad uh, hay una forma, un formulario también uh, pero de nuevo si es alguien que se quiere uh, uh, dañar a sí mismo a otros, eso requiere que le llamen la policía inmediatamente and then there's just one more slide if we could show that too, it's also something um, that is a resource for mm -hmm. students you can, um, that's our contact information, sorry there was one more I think before hay una, um, hay... this one yeah, this one, this is, uh, this is for students to, to chat directly with, um, uh, for emergency and crisis. And this is specifically uh, a religious. Um, so this is crisis help incorporating faith and spirituality. So um, this is more along the lines of Christian and Catholic. So the students can go to this website, a safe place online, um, dot com, and they can just chat directly with somebody at 24 seven. So that's also something I think that's real immediate because it's, it's crisis. So that's also uh, important. We want to share that too. And that's what Heather recommended us. So thank you for that resource, Heather. Thank you. And if you wanted to leave it up for a moment, uh, this is Regina, esta página que ven aquí es este específicamente a uh, consejería para lo que es a uh, eh, consejería de fe para estudiantes o lo que es católico, uh, cristiano, um, eh, también lo recomendó Heather. So, pueden tomarle una foto y, y tienen la oportunidad de chatear uh, o uh, textear con un representante en vivo. And, and let me just share my screen really quick. Um, I know we're so out of time, but let mm -hmm. me just go ahead since we're sharing information. Um, oh, gosh. Uh, you're good. You're good, Heather. All right. Um, gosh, hold on. Let me go back. I'm trying to dodge the sun. <laughs> <laughs> um, hold on. I had it just now, and then somehow it went away. Um, oh, come on, real quick. So, okay. Uh, Heather está buscando una página de recurso. Share screen. And here we go. Share. So this is from Delta College's website under health and wellness, some of the resources that are available under the health and wellness services. You can see that we have um, resources for students, COVID-19 resources, contact us. Um, but this is a new, um, new product, or I should say a new um, resource that we have and this is the one that we were describing that's only available to students so faculty and staff don't have access to this but it is um, a very helpful um, it's a what we call social media with a purpose and um, I will just really like show this really brief brief video. Student life can be incredibly tough especially during a pandemic but you don't need to go at it alone. This is your community to talk to students around the world any time of day or night and get support for whatever is on your mind. Anxiety, stress, relationship difficulties, no judgments here. No waiting times or cost, just people who get you. Here's how to get it. Go to your app store on your iOS device, search for Talk Campus, and use your deltacollege.edu email address to join. That's it. Now you have a whole wellness community at your fingertips. To talk about Talk Campus and other wellness-related issues, please join us at the next Active Minds meeting. We meet every Wednesday at 1.30 at the Zoom link on the screen. 
also the settings that you can put into the Talk Campus app. Once you log in and download the app, you're only able to access it using your student ID, I mean your student email. That's how um, you're able to enter into the app to be able to make it accessible to you. And you can put settings on there to where you can have, they have language settings as well. So, um, so it will be able to be customized according to for that. This is another website. We have the Campus Well, which is a, a online virtual health center that has articles and content that's updated every week on there, tips about mental health, finances, nutrition, all of that. Cafe Connections, but we also wanted to remind you about Active Minds. Um, the Zoom meetings meeting every Wednesday at 1.30. Um, and so we just, just want to make sure that you're aware of the various resources that we do have available um, um, at Delta College and taking advantage of those. And thank you so much again for all of you for being here today. No, thank you Heather for accepting the invitations and come to see us. And really, really, right now is a huge problem for all the students, especially the, we're learning second language then we have one trouble to another one and the kids are home then everybody's is under stress and now we have a better vision how to help them thank you regina thank you to to all your staff mm -hmm. thank you for coming thank you and yes we're going to see you another invitation later on thank you. okay invite thank us <laughs> have yeah. a good weekend everyone try to remember the self-care very important <laughs> think of something that you can thank do you. this weekend to take care of yourself okay Yes, yes thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sergio. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Sergio. Bye. bye bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Gracias, Sergio. Disculpen que no me vea, pero me apagó mi 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 esta computadora y no y estoy intentando, pero no soy por grosera. Solamente. No, está bien. No alcancé a traducir la última parte, pero.